Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Witness Day, we're going to talk about USB-C cables. So let's dive deep into it. Now, why exactly do we need to worry about cables? Well, uh, USB-C is here and is the law, meaning EU has already passed the law. So at the end of this year, uh, all mobile phones and all small electronics has to use USB-C and power delivery protocol. On top of that, laptops are given a, a grace period by 2026, they should also include that. So if I'm not mistaken, their deadline is 2026 because again, power delivery has a new standard power delivery extended power range. Uh, that puppy goes to 240 watts. So that will be enough for majority of laptops. So, but they do need time to like figure things out. So that's why they are in the grace period right now. And mobile phones, this is the last year. So it's here is the law and this uh, last hassle apple even they were had to force it so that's done so at this point in time apple android now android while they had the physical part sorted they did uh, they went yolo on the handshake part they were still making a lot of e-waste why was that simply because every company was making their own proprietary bs standard for charging even though power delivery was built so eu had uh, one law for uh, basically two laws for apple to follow have the physical port and follow the proper charging uh, protocol for Android follow the proper charging protocol aka power delivery. PCs also have to have this now laptops and all that and Linux also supports it. So at this point in time USB-C is here it's real and as time will progress we will slowly let that be clear it's a very slow and painful and expensive process but slowly will reach a point where uh, one cable would be there for to rule them all. One power cable one data cable done we slowly is going to reach there. Now, what are the steps here? Well, there are three core steps. You have source, you have cable and you have sync. So your power adapter, your power bank generally is classified as source. Then you have your cable, then you, it, you have sync. So these are the three players that make sure you get uh, your good experience. Now, here's the while uh, we generally pay attention on the devices and all that jazz but you are only limited by the weakest link in the chain so for example let's say you have 240 watt capable uh, power adapter awesome uh, your cable is not capable of that your device is capable of that yeah you're not gonna get 240 watt you're gonna get the lowest limitation opposite could also happen you can have like let's say your sync as in your mobile phone uh, or laptop has that power of absorbing the cable is also rated for that but the source as in the adapter does not have that yeah you're not gonna get it so there's always a real reality of uh, you know limited by the weakest link and we generally pay attention to source and sync so we know those but cable we neglect and that comes to bite in the eyes so let's understand the data part of the USB-C data cable so data uh, you have to understand USB is universal serial bus now this puppy is a long protocol meaning we started with this do one or two things to like it does everything right now so it has finally become universal and it had going through upgrade after upgrade after upgrade so we started with 12 mbps whoa to 40 mbps to 500 mbps to 1000 or 10 gbps or uh, to 2 gigabits per second or 20 gigabytes per second 4 gigabits per second uh, gigabytes per second uh, 40 gigabits per second uh, when the number is too huge generally it's a small b uh, when the number is like 4 simply means capital b uh, 40 means small b bits and bytes 8 divided by 8 so so that's what we had. We started very humble and we went through exponential change. Actually, to be frank, uh, the change from uh, 40 to basically USB uh, 2.0 to 3.0 was the biggest jump. After that, we reached a stagnation point because it becomes seriously hassle in order to go higher and higher speed because other things become bottleneck. For example, if you have mechanical hard drive, I have mechanical hard drives. That's awesome. Okay. But here's it. It cannot exceed 500. Okay. Then that's the bottleneck. Uh, SSD, here's deal. Uh, unless you are paying a lot, you do not have very fast SSDs externally. You can buy it that can go up to one gigabytes per second. At that point, is your computer fast enough to actually handle that? Be, you would be shocked how many computers cannot unless they are very recent. Then you're like 20. Now the cable becomes important. Uh, signal retimer, all of those becomes 40. Uh, you have to pay a lot of money to get it. So the jump that I have lived through that was the biggest that was like whoa well, day and night difference was from going USB 2 to USB 3 after that it's like meh and be mindful the biggest reason for that is uh, USB association smoked weed uh, it was contaminated with something bad and they got brain damage they have weird weird names instead of a logical name of 5 Gbps 10 Gbps 
ट्वेंटी जी बी पी एस फोर्टी जी बी पी एस डर्न गो होम स्वीट ड्रीम्स नॉट लाइक थ्री जेन टू पॉइंट वन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई थ्री एंड देन रीनेम इट दे हैव रीनेम्ड स्टेट थिंग्स दैट आर एक्चुअली इन द मार्केट टू टाइम्स डोट यू कैनॉट अन डू इट यू डू नॉट हैव थानोस पावर वेयर लाइक ओके रीनेम एवरीथिंग बट दे हैव डन दैट वाई सेट लाइक देर स्मोकिंग समथिंग बैड टेंटेड सो हाउ द हेक यू एस बी डज दिस वेल यू एस बी यूटिलाइज वट यू कॉल डिफरेंशियल सिग्नलिंग वायर मीनिंग इफ यू आर वर फेमिलियर विथ वर्किंग विथ माइक्रोफोन्स और ऑडियो इंडस्ट्री यू नो यूर एक्सल आर इट हैज वन ग्राउंड एंड वन पॉजिटिव वन नेगेटिव बेसिकली इन्वर्टेड सिग्नल सो सेम फिलोसफी इन्वर्टेड सिग्नल और डिफरेंशियल सिग्नल इज सेंट द डेटा सो दैट्स हाउ वी डू इट बट हेज डी वंस वी स्टार्ट टू अपग्रेड इड यू हैव डी प्लस डी माइनस एज इन इफ यू लुक एट द पिन आउट ऑफ यू एस पी सी यू विल सी इट विल हैव डी प्लस एंड डी माइनस वट इज दैट मीन दैट्स डेटा दैट इफ यू हैव दैट पेयर ऑफ केबल यू कैन अचीव यू एस पी टू पॉइंट टू देन यू फॉर ट्वेंटी जी पी एस यू हैव टू हैड मोर पेयर्स सो इफ यू पेड अटेंशन टू दिस connector you may have noticed it has way too many pins that's the reason for the pin it has a lot of pairs for example pair number 1 is dp1 d uh, dp1 is data positive 1 uh, data negative 2 one is positive one is negative uh, then you have tx uh, positive 1 and then you have tx negative 1 then you have rx positive 1 rx negative 2 so you see there are a lot of pairs so that pairs allows you to achieve super duper high speed without this pair you simply will not get it and uh, now be mindful can you have a simple passive cable that just works for 10 gbps uh, 5 gbps easy 10 gbps easy 20 short distance so if you even buy a ssd based uh, um, storage and it is like okay it can actually give 20 uh, gbps you will find that cables are generally small the reason is a passive cable has to be small if you make the cable even 1 meter long like let's say this long it will not work Uh, the signal will become too messy and uh, the way the protocols are built the handshake decides the speed uh, so it won't be like okay i'm feeling to be stable at 10 i'm going to drop to 9 8 no it's like am i stable at 10 yes awesome no go to 5 so you will be in a very sticky situation especially with 20 gbps it it will handshake fails it drops to 10 it if that fails it drops to 5 so uh passive cable if you want a cheap passive cable at 20 gbps it must be a small run so what if you want a long one well this is where it gets expensive so once you actually have all the data pairs that means you can have upwards of four data pairs uh, that puppy requires this sort of ic actual full fledged computer that is here that is doing retiming or signal conditioning as we call it so without that you cannot touch 40 gbps if anybody says you are 40 gbps without a chip yeah that's not happening a passive cable cannot do that not even a small one it needs to have this without that retiming will not happen the joint itself the connector to basically this to this joint is that noisy so you need to have this ic and if you have paid attention to thunderbolt 3 cables why the heck they had so much expensive cable and this electronics that's the reason is the retimer without that retimer signal conditioning will not happen and then you cannot transfer the data so that's why cable price becomes expensive even with the speed and it has nothing to do with uh, basically power delivery so you see this ic maybe because again power delivery also requires a different ic many time we confuse these two things they can be done by same ic if uh, ic is uh, advanced enough but generally you need a retimer for high speeds you want a long cable that can do 20 or 40 gps you need a quality ic there to condition your signal that's why it's so expensive now what about power now power usb c is a very complex puppy you may think like uh, isn't it just a fancy uh, you know lightning jack no lightning jack is child's play compared to usb c usb c is fundamentally more complex so it has a lot of requirement for example if you ever was like why don't every device still uh, especially with cheap devices like uh, the worst device uh, decision in this is raspberry pi pico that has uh, micro b why well micro b is just a jack when you put usb c you can't just put usb c it will not work you need two pull down resistors so apparently they wanted to do cost cutting way too much so they did not put to that resistor. and that's why you cannot just like plonk the uh, port and just put it on a old device it will work it will not that's why people say usb c is expensive it's not the just the jack you have to redesign the pcb so it has two resistors two 5 kilo ohm pull down resistors without this pull down resistor uh, basically the sync device as in like wherever you have the female port will not accept power the Uh, basically the adapter will talk and it's like it will not see that uh, register pulling down and it's like nope nope 
it will just like it will nope it so you must have that that's why it's uh, you have to buy chips like this where you, you have those resistors now you can pull out five volts out of it now what if you need more than that because you must have paid attention to now we have speed charging so we have a bit higher voltage so you can go from uh, 5 volt to 9 volt to 12 volt to 15 volt to 20 volts mm -hmm. so in those sort of scenario you have to do what we call pd handshake this is the law for uh, basically everybody now that they must support this you can have anything on top of it go you on it but you must support this one also and because of the development cost in involved and hassle and all that so everybody's just like accepting it it's like okay okay we agree we're gonna use pd now pd uh has requirement it has to have a handshake where it's like it actually talks to it now where is that device well it's in the source and it's in the sink, not in the cable. So your mobile phone talks to the adapter, it's like, bro, tell me. So adapter is like, bro, I got you. I have uh, five volts, I got nine volts, I got 15 volts. Some another adapter will be like, I got five volts, I got nine volt, 12 volt, 12 volt is non-standard. So not every adapter has it. I have 15 volt, I have 20 volts. Uh, so mobile was like, you know what? I'm fully discharged, I can eat energy, give me 20 volts. It eats up 20 volt. Then it's like, okay, okay, my battery is almost fully charged. Let's drop it down. Let's chill out. Drop it to 9 volt. So adapter screams, sync listens. Now, here's the, what about the cable? Cable is the weak link here. Because if you do not have an IC on the cable itself, the cable, uh, so basically the devices, basically the source and sync will think that it's a normal USB-C cable. What does that mean? That simply means if a normal USB-C cable is built properly, it should be able to handle 3 amps of continuous current. So that's the amp rating. That's why voltage will not play a role to it. It's just there to like, hey, how much amps can I throw through it? It's like, hey, you can send upwards of 3 amps without any requirement. Like normal cable, go YOLO 3 amps. If it melts under 3 amps, it's a defective cable. It did not meet the USB-C spec. So what if you need more? Again, okay, laptops requires more. Heck, even some smartphones require more than that. So what if you need 5 amps? Now 5 amp is the upper limit. So if you need 5 amps, you must have an e-chip. This chip will literally tell the adapter and phone, uh, it's like, bro, I got this. You guys can talk, you guys can increase the voltage as much as you want, but if you need more oomph, more amp, I got this. I can support 5 amps of power. So you need, uh, basically that's why you will uh, see in the basically a purchasing aisle of Amazon or wherever, it's like 60 watts and 100 watts. What is that 100 watts? 100 watts basically simply means it has that. It can talk to adapter and tell it's like I am safe for 5 amps of power. Now what about its bigger cousin? Uh, basically USB-C power delivery 3.1 extended power range. That puppy goes to 48 volt. So it requires mandatory chip. You cannot have uh, unlock 48 volt, even if you have this chip. If you have this chip, this only unlocks five amps till 20 volts. If you want 24 volts, 36 volt and 48 volt, you need a different chip that is mandatory for uh, EPR. Now it's like, why? Well, we have already filtered for amps. Why do we need this? Yeah, 48 volt is kind of rough on electronics and especially for dielectrics, as in the, uh, insulation property 48 volts it's brutal so uh, wear and tear can literally ca cause short circuit damage. that's why they require a bit more oomph on it whereas like yeah we have to actually design the connectors many times the connectors have to have gold coating otherwise the erosion of plugging in and out uh, will cause miniature arcs and it will destroy it worst case scenario can even jam it so it requires a epr ic there so you have to put another ic only then the uh, phone and adapter can be like i got this generally it won't be done by phone it will be done by laptops right now uh, like uh, for example uh, uh, think book uh, some notebooks do support 36 volt 48 is still taking time but 36 is there so but for those sort of cable you do need that epr chip not basic e marker you need epr marker for that so that's why you see this many designs where they have like for a charger cable they have ic on it that's why it is. ic does nothing other than to give the go ahead it's like three amps go yolo who cares you need more than three amps uh, the ic has to be like i got this this cable is rated i am taking responsibility for it and many times the ic has enough memory that you can store whole whose brand it is when it was manufactured serial number lot number all of those things are done so this is the power part of it. Data we already talked about, power we already talked about. And many times you need both chip if you want like, you know, uh, 40 GBPS and uh, 240 watts of power.
So this is uh, the final nail, the cable part of it. Is this the weakest link simply because we generally pay a uh, lot of money for adapters and uh, mobile phones. Is the cable we generally do a lot of cost cutting because again, it's very easy. So you generally only gonna get one cable, but you when I consume more than one, you're, you can have one cable in your PC, one cable next to your charging stand, one cable in your car and all that. So cable generally becomes the part where we have the least amount of control on quality. So cost cutting can happen a lot. So this would be a fully fledged GG cable, super expensive, but again, it's a full fledged computer there with its own power supply, signal retimer, and uh, that e power delivery handshaker. So it's a full fledged GGS and be mindful for 40 GPS uh, and even 20 GPS, you cannot just use conductor. You have to use coax cable. Yes, coax cable comes, that is that thin. So, and yeah, that's the other re reason why it's so expensive. So then you can have like something mild where it's like, okay, it's a competent cable designed for power charging and all that, but it only has USB 2.0. Then you can have something that does has nothing, but hope that it works. And another that's like, you are not sure whether it will survive for even three amps. So that is why like this sort of cables that are very expensive uh, exist. Because cost cutting is very easy, but you can uh, cause issues. We consume more cables than we have devices. Like your laptop will have one cable, your laptop bag, camera bag, all of them will generally have a cable. And as more we progress and more we reach a point where it's like well, USB-C takes care of everything, more mix and matching will happen and more cheap cables will end up with your expensive devices. So you have no idea what you got. You Worst case scenario, you could get a cable that is just power only. Now again, that may be desirable, but you need to know you may be like, hey, I'm traveling and I do not want to worry about somebody jacking the USB port and then I'm like uh, inserting malware into my mobile phone. No problem. Power only. Who cares? And that was by design. That was by design. So that's why the power delivery handshake is completely isolated from the uh, main SOCs. They could have done that with the SOC, but it was thought out very early on. It's like, what if somebody malicious does something? They're like, yeah, let's isolate this puppy. So... Uh, you have no idea. Again, that's why you need to see. PD 60 watt is super easy that you should be able to get. PD 60 watt and USB 2.0 should be very easy to do unless you have some horribly cheap cable. It should be just take it, take it and go. USB 3.0, 10 GPS, you have to buy. Generally, you will not buy fake cables for this because it's not that difficult. And uh, it's like if you these are cheap enough and they sell enough of it, a bad review will hurt them. So generally, you will get a good system that will work however what if you are rich you're like hey tell me what i have to buy and flood my whole apartment with this cables and never have to worry about it uh, buy thunderbolt 4 cable expensive verified ones uh, yeah they are expensive they are, but they are the gold standard and many times they actually have gold there again to support 48 volt uh, but it's needed that's the only way where you can be like, okay, I buy it today. I do not have to worry about it. I do not have to worry about 20 GPS. I do not have to worry about 40 GPS. I do not have to worry about 48 volts. You buy it, you forget it. But they are expensive AF. And you can see it. Like it has freaking metal case and all that. It's expensive. But it's deserved. Like it's not like somebody is fleecing you. It's a full-fledged computer on a wire. And yes, it has like megabytes, RAM, all of that. Like it's an ESP32 smaller cousin. So what does this mean? Well, this simply means we have to be a bit more vigilant uh, because it's very hard to test. Flat out, it's very hard. I have to build my own tester where I have like breakout boards and I'm going T T with a multimeter. That's how I have to test it. So if you can buy this sort of cheap board, it should be cheap. It's very expensive in India, but it should be cheap. It, I've seen American prices very cheap. It's like few dollars. Buy this because this will at least tell you how many pairs of wire is there. So if all almost all of the LED lights up, you good go ahead. So it should work till 20 GPS for short distance. And if it's a long cable, at least 10 GPS should be there. So it's a very easy way of testing. Does, uh, does the cable have the conductors needed? So not for power, because again, power, it assumes three amps would be there. So you have a, this sort of system, this is there. But here's the, what if you need test the data speed, 20 GPS, 40 GPS? Yeah, that requires a full-fledged computer. Or like for factory systems, they have an oscilloscope-based uh, measuring instrument. That's very expensive. So this you can buy. Again, be mindful, USB-C is going to become more and more relevant and more and more devices are going to have USB 3.0. So this sort of tester becomes more and more and you, like, it's a dumb device. You buy it, you forget about it. The only thing you have to change is the cells. So you can buy this and never worry about it and utilize it. And uh, the moment you need something more, more powerful, more than 60 watts, uh, you may need to buy this sort of equipment that can test the protocols. Uh, so how the heck this device can test? It talks to the uh, e-marker chip. If there is no e-marker, of course, it's limited to 60 watts. But if there is an e-marker, it will tell the e-marker chip itself will scream. I support 
PD 48 volts. I do not support 48 volts. So this will just read the e-marker chip and give you actual data that this cable supports it or not supports it. So now his deal. Should you buy the cheapest cable? Well, his deal. If you need the speed, like let's say, for example, uh, sometimes it's worth paying on speed. Why? Because money does not buy time, money only buys speed. So for example, my SD card that was in my camera, it's an old camera, six, seven years old, uh, Canon 800D, it is UHS-1. I put a UHS-2 card on that now, like, isn't that wasteful? No, not for shooting, it's useless for shooting. But when I'm dumping the uh, card to my uh, basically computer, I'm using a UHS-2 card. And every card, uh, write speed is generally slower, read speed is at least 2x. So instead of dumping the files at 80 Mbps maximum, I'm dumping the files at 240 Mbps. So that saves a lot of time. Money cannot buy time, but it does buy speed. So that's how I invested my money. And again, many people were like, hey, is it really worth it to buy a SSD uh, to just like transport large files more efficiently? If you are like, hey, I'm going to bite the bullet and buy 40 GBPS SSDs. Yeah. If you if you're like transferring gigabytes of file or terabytes of file, people will like short out take money because it's a very huge difference. So if you need that speed, like if, you're, if you're, that's your requirement, do not cheap out on cable. I do understand the pain and frustration is like, hey, I want one cable in my office, one on my laptop and all that. Yeah, I get it, but it's unwise. If you need the speed or power, you're like, hey, uh, I need fast charging, uh, like because I do not plug my phone and wait for a whole night. I do not have the luxury of slow charging. You may desire a actual proper cable because again, that uh, chip allows the mobile phone to trust it. Whereas like, I got this. I can draw five amps if my battery is fully depleted, I can draw five amps on it and I got this. But if it's like, hey, I can only draw three amps and you're like, hey, I need to get out of the door very quickly. It's like three amps, limited. So 60 watt, 10 Gbps should be easy. The moment you want to exceed that, yeah, that's the expensive part. That's the part where it's like, good luck, good luck. You have to have vigilance. Otherwise, good luck. PD testing is super easy. Is that 20 Gbps and 40 Gbps is very hard. Again, this is like 3,000 or 4,000 rupees in India. In Western world, it should be like $30 and $40, something like that. So this was my presentation on USB-C cable. Hopefully you have liked it, learn from it. In that case, please hit the like button, share it amongst a friend. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press this like, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.